Hi everyone, it's Janet Leonard with Virtual Instructor. And today I'm gonna to show you some PowerPoint animation tips. So I think you'll, uh, if you're doing any kind of PowerPoint presentations, hopefully I'll give you some ideas of different things that you can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll take a look at some PowerPoint. And it should be sharing the screen soon. Okay, I'm gonna to have to restart something in HAP. So let me get that started again. So we'll restart the graphics server. Sometimes you have to do that. Alrighty, I'm gonna go back so we don't have to look at me and we'll just look at the screen. There you go. Alrighty, so now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this slideshow just for a second and a little bit of um, information. I just want you to know where you can find the information on the live classes in case you want to attend some of the others. I'm doing them every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So you can go to our site and see the calendar. And just so you know what's coming up, um, next week I'm gonna talk about Excel pivot tables. So if you aren't using pivot tables yet, they are very cool. They're super easy, and a lot of people are afraid of them, but once I show you how to use them, they're just really powerful. Then the next week, I'm going to talk about a really fun program called mm, mm and it is, I know that's, that's actually the name, and it's really cool for making videos and also kind of spicing up and changing up your Zoom videos. So when you're on Zoom, you can look a, a change it around, not just have the same old background type thing. And then on August 2nd, just so you know, when Microsoft is announcing or actually um, releasing their new Windows 365. So I am going to talk about Windows 365 the following week on August 9th. And then on August 16th, I'll talk, I'll show you how to use the draw table feature in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. All right, so enough of that, but I just want to let you know what's coming up. And so now here's going to be a demo of what I'm about to show you. So I'm going to click the mouse button and then you'll get an idea of the animation I'm going to show you how to create. All right, so here goes the animation. And now I will show you how to create that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape key and that will put me back into good old PowerPoint. And in PowerPoint, I've gone ahead and already loaded up the graphics that I'll be using so that you can see how to use that. And I'm just going to point out how I built this because it's not very tech, not, not very difficult. So I'm going to select that little brown wave thing. And all I'm going to do is hit my up arrow key a bit so you can see really the, all it is is the sh a shape. See, now I'm going to do undo control Z to undo it. And just to show you the shape that it was, I'll click over um, on the home tab. And then I just use this little ribbon shape down here. That's all I did. It's, oh, I'm sorry, it's a wave shape. So I just drew it and, and gave it a color I wanted. So that's how I got that up there. Now this little apple, is that's my logo. And it's actually off the slide because I want it to come into the slide through the animation. So I'm gonna move it over here so you can see. It actually has the white background. So it'll show up in the, the brown area. So again, I'll just do an undo to put it back where it was. And then this is just a graphic I made. And in case you're not aware of it, if you select a picture, you can go up here where it says picture format. And there's a whole bunch of different styles. So I just chose this one and that's why it has a little reflection there. And then when it comes to the text, that's just a plain old text box that I put in. All right, so now that you know, and then this is just a graphic background that I put in. All right, now that you know what I've got going on, let me show you how you can create animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that brown wave object. And I'm going up to animation, so up at the top. Now just so you know, there's something called an animation pane, which is a really good thing to have out there, or have showing, I should say. Now when you click on it, the animation pane typically by default will show up on the right side, but sometimes it's in the way. So you can move up toward the top where it says animation pane, and if you see that little four-headed arrow, you can hold down the mouse button and you can drag it in so it's a floating pane. You can drag it over toward the right and it will dock itself. 
Um, I think I'm going to keep it as a floating pane right now so we can focus more on the, the slide itself. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. You're going to see why in, in a moment. So right now we don't have any animations going on on this slide. So I'm going to go ahead and I've selected the wave. And now I'm going to go back up to animations. And you might notice there's a little drop down area here and it expands it to show you the different types of animation that you can do. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be a motion path because I want it to just kind of rise up the wave. So I'm just, I just wanted to go straight up. So I'm going to click on this one that says lines. Now, when I do it, only problem is by default, it goes down and I want it to go up. So what I can do is while I have this selected, I've got this selected, notice up here on the, the ribbon area, there's that particular effect. So whatever effect you're working on at the time, it shows up here. So I'll click on it. And instead of going down, I'm going to tell it to go up. So now that's how I get the wave to go up. Okay. And we'll talk about timing in just a moment. Alrighty. So there's the first one. And see that little mouse? That means that the mouse, when I click the mouse or hit the space bar on the keyboard, that's going to trigger it to start. So I'll be talking about that in just a teeny bit. But now let's go over to the my logo. Now I want my logo to kind of float in and kind of move a little bit. So I'm going to use another motion path path. So I've got it selected. I'll click the little drop down. And this time I'm going to go to custom path because I want to drop myself. So I'll click on it. And then all I have to do is come back to the graphic and I'm going to click inside that object. Notice it's off of the slide. So now I'm just going to drag it and I'll just make it move a little bit. And I think I'll end it up right about here. And then I just have to double click when I'm finished. All right, so you can see it came in. Yeah, kind of looks a little weird, but that's all right. So if I don't like it, I can always delete it. But I'm going to keep it going on right now. And I'm going to drag it down. I think I'll drag it down a teeny bit. You might notice it moves this. All righty, now up on my little timeline, it shows that both of these animations are scheduled to start at the same time, but they both have a mouse. So I want this second one to start with this first one. So I don't want to have to keep clicking my mouse. So what I can do is click on this little drop down. And when I do that, I can go ahead and say, no, don't start with a click. Start with the previous. So it'll start when I start this one. Now, I'm going to show you what happens because you can kind of test it out from right within here. So I'll go up to the top one and then I'll click play and watch what happens. See, they both come in at the same time. All right, but I don't want that. I want the, the logo to come in a little later. So what I can do is go down to the logo where the, it's a picture and I'm going to drag it out a bit. And then it's also going kind of fast. So I'm going to click on this little drop down and I'm going to go to timing. So when I click on timing, and don't worry if you're thinking, oh my goodness, there's a lot. We actually have a course on this coming up. So I'll tell you about that, where it goes into this in greater detail so you get the practice with it. But I'm going to go to timing, and I'm going to change it from two seconds to three seconds. So it's a little bit slower. All right. And so now you can see it's just it just showed me that one particular one running. So I'm going to go back up to the top one and play. And now I have the wave, and then I have this coming in. Now, notice how it goes down at the bottom. I don't really want it to end up down toward the bottom. I want it to be higher up on the wave. So this is how you can edit it. So I'm going to click on the apple. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a little triangle here. That's where it's going to end. So I'm going to click on that. And I think I'm going to bring it up a bit. So all I'm doing is dragging this up. And you can see the it's showing me where that graphic is going to end. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit and then we'll come back over here and play it again so there's the wave it comes it looks a little weird and then it ends up so i like that a little bit better right okay so now the next thing that i want to do is i'd like this graphic up here to uh just kind of appear so kind of fade in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select it and I'll go back up into animations. So you can see there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. Um, now, in this case, I'm going to deal with how I want it to arrive. So how does it appear onto the slide? 
So I'm going to click on fade because I want it to kind of fade in. I think that looks kind of cool. But look at that. It's trying to trigger it with a mouse and I want it to do this whole thing together. So I'll just go back over here. I'll click on the drop down and I'll, instead of saying start on click, I'll say start with previous. And then I want it to start after the little Apple logo starts going. So I'm going to drag it over to about here. And so now let's test it out and see what this looks like. So I'll do play from, and there's a wave, here comes the logo and the, the graphic starts appearing. So hopefully this is giving you some ideas. So basically you just pick your objects and you determine. So if it's a motion path, you're going to then either, it could be a straight line, there's a loop one, or you can do kind of crazy one like I did, which is custom. And then when it comes to just some object you want to have appear, uh, if I go back up here, look at all these different appearance options you have. And by the way, there's more effects down here, but I won't go into that right now. Okay. And then I have one last thing. I'd like to have the text come in as well. So I'm going to select the text box and I'll click on this and I want to determine how it's going to come in. I'm going to have it do this thing grow and turn. I think that might be kind of fun. So I'll select that. There's my little effect. But again, I don't want it associated with the mouse. I want it to go with everything else. So I'll just click and choose start with previous. And then all I have to do is I'm going to have it come in about the same, maybe a little bit after that graphic. So I'll come back up to the top and I can go to play from. There's the wave. Here comes the logo. There's the picture and then you get your text. So hopefully that gives you a little idea of kind of some of the power and kind of the cool things you can do with animation. Now I'm going to click on this drop down one more time. We didn't talk about this because there's a lot to this, but you can have an emphasis as if you want, maybe you're doing a talk and at a certain point in the talk, you want to have some object become maybe um, bounce or become bigger or smaller or um, twirl or whatever. You want to do some sort of, of emphasis on it. And then you also, when, when you're, the uh, object is leaving. So when you're leaving, then you can have the object, it, it initially shows. And then when you tell it that you want it to exit, then you can have some kind of effect. So there's some kind of fun things that you can do with this. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. Now let's go ahead and actually run this. I remember I have it on the on click. If I remove that and say start with previous, notice I don't have any little mouse button. That means that when I go to the slideshow and I start to show it, it's going to run automatically. So I'm going to go to slideshow and just say run from the current slide. And there it goes. It's automatically running. And there's our animation. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. Now I'm going to hit escape to go back to PowerPoint. And just in case you're interested in learning more about this, because you can see there's an awful lot that you can do with animation. We actually have a class coming up next week. So the registration closes in four days and it's only $75. It's live, hands-on with a real instructor. So you're gonna actually do the work along with the instructor. You'll get a training guide um, that gives you step-by-step -step instructions. And we also have one coming up in August. All right, now. In addition to animation, like I showed you, I'm going to show you something that is not animation, but sometimes it, it can look like animation and sometimes it's just an easier thing to do. So I'm going to go to the next slide and here I have a bullet list. But when I'm, let's say I'm doing a talk and I'd like it to kind of emphasize the different topics as I'm going through. So what you can do is you can create the list and then you can right click and duplicate that slide. So it's an identical copy. So I'm just gonna go down to one that I did. And what I did here on this copy of the slide is I changed the color of anything other than the topic I was talking about. And then I duplicated the slide again. And then I changed, whoops, I think it's over here. Then I changed that color. Then I changed this one. And then I changed this one. So there's no animation involved on this one at all. But sometimes when you're doing a presentation, it's kind of nice to have the flexibility to go backward or forward, which isn't as easy when you're doing animation. 
So what I'm going to do is go back to slideshow and I'll just show from the, the current slide. And all I'm doing is using the mouse, the little uh, uh, wheel on the mouse. And notice how I can go to the different topics. It's just going from slide to slide. But let's say somebody has a question on mo motion pass. So I can just go right back up and then start talking about that. So this sometimes nah, doing it a little more the old fashioned way is easier than doing animation. Now we do actually have a class also on text animation. So the 301, the 300 series in our PowerPoint has to do with more advanced things that you can do with PowerPoint. 301 has to do with animating objects and 302 has to do with animating text. This is not animating text. This is just copying and doing a duplicate and changing the colors. So if you are interested in that, the 302 class will go into some cool animation effects that you can do. So hopefully that gave you some ideas on different ways that you can add some animation to your PowerPoint. And just as a reminder, we do have some classes coming up. So um, again, if you want to learn more about animating objects, there's the, the date. Just go to our website, virtualinstructor.com. And one last thing, if you want to get a notification on the different talks that I'll be doing, and then I also have a follow-up email that gives you a little extra information about what I talked about, um, you can go over to virtualinstructor.com and either from the home page, you can go to the Monday calendar or you can just type in Monday-Live-Calendar and just sign up and then you will not miss out on any of the ones, the talks. So just to uh, let you know, the August 9th is going to be a fun one because that's, I'm going to talk about the new Windows 365. That's kind of fun. Next week, if you don't know about uh, pivot tables and you don't want to miss that one because it is pretty cool and you'll be blown away with how easy it is to analyze large amounts of data. And uh, the fun one I'm adding is this new mm -mm, uh, software and it, it's just really fun. So I'll show you that. And finally, on August 16th, I'll go ahead and talk about how you can draw tables in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, Outlook. So thanks so much for uh, attending this live, and I hope to see you again uh, next Monday. Have a great rest of your week, and I hope some of these little shortcuts will help you reclaim some of your valuable time. Bye.